What in the fork is going on here? How much carbon do you really need? I don't think I've ever seen them yet. Now, a few weeks ago, I cut my cheap Chinese carbon frame and forks in half. Now, it turns out you guys love a bit of destruction, all in the name of education. So today I have these Pinarello Onda forks, which Rob had laying around in his graveyard, as you do. I know it's very sad sight having a graveyard full of bike parts, but every cloud has a silver lining. And the silver lining being that Rob gifted us these Pinarello forks so we can chop them up. Wow, wonderful news um so we're going to cut these and we're going to see what they've done on the lug areas um where there's any difference yeah and then you're going to cut through these mm. and i want to see the crown race yeah on these yeah it's interesting how is it flex wise for it's you? very stiff very very stiff yeah i mean i can hardly move these that's mad yeah compared to what we've seen that's stiff stiff I know this squeeze test isn't the most scientific comparison, but we did this test on various forks on previous videos to get an indication of the fork stiffness. The radius of the fork as well as the carbon thickness can affect this flex. When we compare the Pinarello forks to the Trifox, the Pinarello forks are much stiffer. The Canyon forks that we previously tested had a little more flex than the Pinarello forks, but to be honest, it was pretty marginal. Initial thoughts? Yeah, just solid as a rock. Thick as well. Uh, not as thick as the Trifox. Thinner. I think. Yeah. No, thinner. In my, from what I remember. Yeah. I was surprised Good how thick choice. they were. They're definitely lighter than the Trifox ones. Yeah. But not. Uh, you see, it's, again, it's about the in intellectual approach to the engineering ish, uh, challenge. Yeah, yeah. Is how much carbon do you really need to make them stiff and for weight? Okay. So, so these guys, again, I go back to the point, these brands are got big research and development departments, yeah, yeah. and this is an example of why you pay the money you pay for. These bikes are well, well considered for their purpose. So you can almost get to the point where it's just extra carbon for carbon's sake. It doesn't, you don't know, gain, just weight you gain. Yeah. It's how much you can get away with Yeah. that makes it fit for purpose, robust enough, and good enough for a pro to climb on and ride. Um, this is what I love to see, aluminium oh, dropouts. That whole section there? Yeah, that's, that's the lug they've inserted. Now you can see there's a slight swelling on the side here. Yeah. And we'll continue around on this side, it's all swollen here. Okay, and I know because when we scan them, they're all slightly different around here because they, they, they're treated by hand, these bits. Okay. And the reason is, um, what I talked about earlier, mixing aluminium with carbon is not a good thing because the two don't belong together. Now I seem to be talking myself out of what I've just said. <laughs> but what they've done is they've solved the problem here. And that is the, bo the bonding between relationship them. between the two has to be constant and safe. So yeah. what they've done is, unlike some of the earlier brand, uh, brands that produced these, they just lugged them and then painted over them. Yeah. And then you've got these hairline cracks. And I'm sure some of your viewers have seen on their older bikes, a very straight crack line in the paint. Okay. That's just the flexing of in the material. Materials. Yeah. So what they've done on these later on, these iterations, is they've still gone with the aluminium bits yeah. because they believe they're more <coughs> long lasting. And then they've covered this with epoxy. They've covered the join with epoxy. Uh -huh, and then they've painted over it. So there's no alarm bells. And it's also an extra safety net for the dropout to remain in position okay. in the lug. We saw on the Trifox, this was solid. So some of them solid, solid carbon, carbon yeah. the whole way through. It's not such a big deal for the front forks because the front forks don't very rarely wear. Okay, yeah. They don't wear like the rear wheel does. It's not the same issues they have. So it's very rare to find worn out front forks. I've, okay. I don't think I've ever seen them yet. So it might be a bit of overkill. They've solved the issue of a, uh, being, you know, yeah. creating an alarm, a concern of fracture. In, in the material. Yeah, these look good. Um, wall thickness all good. Wall thickness is thin enough because it's a lot of material yeah. here. If you condense that down to a standard wall, you the same amount of material, so you'd have quite a thick tube. So for the same weight requirements, 
of the rider. Yeah, yeah. So they've just gone and dispersed that. It's more aerodynamic, yeah. those marginal gains. But that the, the traditional fork, these forks would be in like that, very close, uh, right up against the wheel. Yeah. yeah. And they discovered that there was more mass of air to move around the whole wheel and a lot of turbulence than if you reduce the turbulence by widening the fork and letting the air slip between the side of the wheel. Oh, yeah. So these forks, when they came out, were revolutionary. In a previous video, Rob spoke in depth about dropouts and what design was best. To cut a long story short, if your wheel isn't properly locked in tight through improper fitment with a QR score, then abrasion could occur on the dropouts. This is worse with carbon because it doesn't abrade so well. So carbon dropouts are less tolerant if we humans don't fit things correctly. It's not so much of an issue with through axles, but that's a conversation for another day. Aluminium, on the other hand, is better for dropouts because it does well with abrasion. But to have aluminium dropouts and a carbon frame, you have to bond carbon to aluminium, which in itself can cause issues. Now that we have the Pinarello forks chopped up, let's get up close and personal and put them under the microscope. And here we're looking at the Pinarello forks we've just cut. Yeah. Again, you can see the consistency of on that radius. Yeah. Just how solid that material is. That's good. And the radius you always say is a harder part to yeah. to compress. So so on these forks they've gone for for just pure compression and they've achieved that very successfully, which is in part why these forks are so stiff. Right. The matrix isn't allowed to flex at all in between the composite. Both rigid in, in composite and rigid in the design shape. Again, it's just a, it's just a identifying what makes a bike stiff or makes yeah. a component stiff and what makes a component robust to an atom bomb. When cutting these forks, you really notice the thickness of the carbon. I mean, the angle grinder is a bit of a beast, but these forks put up a good fight. Now, when I started this YouTube channel, I never in a million years thought that I'd be cutting up a pair of Pinarello forks. It literally couldn't have been further from my plan. It's funny how these things turn out. The carbon depth was that thick that I couldn't actually get through it with the angle grinder, so I had to resort to the good old hacksaw and get hacking. With a bit of elbow grease and some calories burnt, the forks were in two pieces. So looking inside the fork for the first time, we can see that there is actually a lot going on. Now these forks are a rim brake fork. So there would be a caliper bolt going through the center, which is why there is a gap or a sort of cavity on either side of the fork. The Tri-Fox was a disc brake bike and it seemed like that had the cavity filled, which was all that white stuff that I believe to be resin based on Rob's feedback. If we look at the steerer tube thickness of the Pinarello forks, it looks pretty much in keeping with other steerer tubes that I have cut and looked at. I feel like this is a part that you can't really skimp on. It simply needs to be thick and it needs to be strong. There is some wrinkling here and there in the lower part of the steerer tube, which is not gonna make you cry yourself to sleep at night. You get these tiny little wrinkles, okay? Wrinkles? Wrinkles? Now towards the crown race, there was also this random bit of metal that looked like it was there for extra support or reinforcement. Maybe it's to help the alignment of the caliper section, ensuring that the caliper bolt is in the correct location. I was wondering why sparks were flying around when I was cutting through this section of the forks, but seeing this chunk of metal, it all makes sense. The Tri-Fox forks don't have this metal bit, so it's either something specific to rim brake forks or Tri-Fox decided against it. I need to get my hands on some more disc brake forks. The thickness of the carbon in the legs or the wings or the blades, these long pieces, whatever they are called, is actually pretty similar when we put the Pinarello and the Trifox side by side. So now on to the main event, the crown race, which is arguably the most important part of the fork. So if we look at the carbon thickness, we can see that in places, the carbon is super thick. It's basically a solid chunk of carbon around the crown races as well, specifically at the front of the race, the carbon on the Pinarello fork looks thick enough. If we compare this to the Tri-Fox fork, we can see that the carbon is considerably thinner on the Tri-Fox at the front of the crown race. So it's good to see that the Pinarello has thicker carbon around the crown race, which is a very important part of the fork and under a lot of pressure and tension. So what does Rob think? I sent over all the pics of footage 
and he said it's looking as it should i'm surprised it's so untidy in the bottom half but not surprised about the wall thickness which is a tad thicker on the crown race the big difference being that the thinner side is on the rear of the crown race the trifox the thinner side is on the front of the crown race of the fork now if this video interests you check out this video next where we cut up a high-end canyon frame and took a peek inside it's pretty insightful